Next up, we have Bhavana. I got that right this time, right? Yes, good. Uh, she's a senior solutions engineer at Netafly. And I, I don't even know if I got that right, honestly. But uh, Bhavana came here um, to Canada from LA, which I don't quite understand. But we're glad you're in Toronto <laughs> and enjoying our up and down weather. So please welcome Bhavana to the stage. Oh, you got a mic? Awesome. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Yes, oh, this is it. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Bhavna Srinivas, and um, I'm so happy to see you all here. Just last year, I was sitting somewhere in the middle right here, and um, I was very new to Toronto at that point, and uh, I was having really great conversations. I didn't know most people here, but we were still having really great discussions, and I remember leaving the event feeling um, very, very inspired. And this year, I'm on the stage talking to you all. So I'm hoping to leave you all with a similar feeling of inspiration and empowerment. When Andre first asked me if I'd like to share my story today, um, I said, yes, I mean, that would be great, because I had such a good time last year. And then I started thinking, but why me? What have I done to earn this invitation? And am I even interesting enough? Like, what's my story? And I, as I started thinking about these questions, I looked back at the past 15 years of my life, and I realized that at every point of my life, I've had similar questions, which were like majorly uh, doubting my capabilities and myself, right? And all the actions that I took during those periods were driven by those questions. And of course, like, I mean, a lot has changed. It's been 15 years. I've had the opportunity to try a lot of things. Uh, to learn from some of the opportunities. I failed at a lot of them, and I know a little more about myself, like what I like, what I don't like, what I'm good at, what I enjoy doing. And I've come to look at these insecurities very, very differently. So this is the journey, though, that I'd love to share with you all today, because like uh, you know, people have been saying before, there's so much power in sharing our stories. Uh, I feel like even as individual and as unique our is the mics? Yeah. As unique as our, um, sto our journeys are, there's still very similar experiences that we go through, and I, I believe that we can benefit from all of this together by sharing it. So let's start from the beginning. Um, I was born and raised in Chennai, a city on the east coast of India. And I, I, you know, I had a great childhood, loving family. I did really well at school. I had no trouble with the rote method of learning. And, um, but my worldview at that point was very, very narrow. Like, I was like, oh, okay, I, you know, you go to school, you do well, you get good grades, and then you choose between the holy trinity of engineering, medicine, or law. And <laughs> I felt like I was not cut out for law, and to become a doctor, you had to study for too many years. So by the method of elimination, I chose engineering. And then I went through four years of that. And towards the end of it, I was like, okay, I'm going to go apply for my master's in the US because now I have two more years to think about what I want to do with my life. I can postpone thinking about what I really want to do. So I packed my bags and I moved to LA. I got into the master's program at University of Southern California. And at this point, I'm very invested. I'm like, okay, I have moved all the way to LA. This is the first time I'm leaving India, the first time I'm living away from my family. I'm going to do, make the best out of this opportunity. So I, you know, I, I start growing up, I start maturing. I'm living by myself. I'm learning to manage my finances. I'm pushing myself to make new friends. And we all know how difficult it is to make friends as we grow older. So I was really trying hard. But the biggest question in my head was, am I fitting in? Like, you know, I don't know that many people here. Things are very different. Okay, a lot of things are different from how it was back in India. And I keep questioning this decision. Like, is, was it a right decision to have moved all the way from India? And uh, in order to fit in, the first thing that I did was to try and put on an American accent. <laughs> and for those who heard me at that point know that that did not go really well at all. 
And so it was a process. It was a process of learning more about myself where I realized that I don't, I mean, of course I'm going to have an Indian accent. I was raised there for 21 years. And there's nothing bad with an Indian accent. And I speak English. Contrary to popular uh, belief, we do not speak Hindu in India. And so we speak English, so we're, we're going to understand each other. So we don't, I don't have to try so hard to change how I am to fit in. So this is going on on one side. And on the other side, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. I knew by then what I didn't want to do. I knew that I didn't really enjoy writing code all day. I didn't want to become a software engineer. And uh, I didn't know what to Google, though. I was like, OK, I know what I don't want to do, but I don't really know what I want to do. So what do I do? I, I applied for a lot of internships, very traditional roles. And I got rejected in all of them. My friends were getting jobs in all these cool companies in the Bay Area. And uh, this is not helping with my self-confidence at all. And somehow, through, uh, I, I shared my resume with a friend back in India. And through a series of introductions, I landed a job as a developer evangelist at a company called PubNub in the Bay Area. So this, this opportunity is very significant. And I want to take a minute to acknowledge it, because this friend was neither in tech nor in the US. She lived back in India. And so when I shared my resume with her, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. I shared it, and then she shared it. But somehow, some, it, it landed back in the Bay Area. And someone saw it and was willing to give me that chance and talk to me. right? And so I, I think that you know, sometimes you just go through all these measures. Like You never know where the next big opportunity is coming from. So you have to try everything that you can. So I don't know if you caught it in the previous period of my life, I said I got a job as a developer evangelist. Not a software engineer, not a network engineer, none of these traditional roles. I was a developer evangelist. So I was working with developers. I was building cool demos with the PubNub APIs. I was speaking at tech conferences all over the world. And I was living in San Francisco. I was earning money. And I thought, this is it. This is the best life that I can get. right? And so it was a great time. But at the same time, like as I was navigating, you know, through through my navigating through the the um, first role of my life, um, I, I had all these questions like, Am I smart enough? Are they going to feel like I'm a fraud and I actually don't know what I'm I'm doing? I'm googling it as they ask me to do things. <laughs> and am I? Can I negotiate a salary on my first role? Like, how much more should I be asking for? And uh, when should I be changing roles? You know, all these questions, like the list keeps going on and on. And at this time, one of my colleagues told me that um, we were looking to hire a solutions engineer uh, on the sales team. So I was like, OK, I'll keep an eye out. I'll let my friends know. If anyone's interested in this particular role, I'll pass the message on. It took me several weeks, if not a month or two, if I remember correctly, to re recognize that this was an opportunity staring at me. Right? Like it was a startup. They were OK with people moving from one role to the other. And the manager was very interested in hiring me because he felt like I had the right skill set. And so the only thing stopping me from trying this out was me. So I made the move. I, I looked at the job description. And then I, I, I fought all the, I, I, I crushed all the questions in my head saying, oh, can I do this? Can I not? And I moved from being a developer evangelist to a solutions engineer. So as a solutions engineer, I'm still working with technology. But my primary audience who I communicate with is no longer the developer community. I'm now talking to businesses who want to build production applications with the PubNub APIs or the PubNub platform. Right? And so um, I was this, the voice of the customer within the company. And I was working between sales and engineering teams. And uh, I was really thriving. Like, I felt like this was the role. This is it. right? And so I want to take a minute to um, make a shameless plug for being a solutions engineer. Because just like how when I started, I didn't know all these different roles existed. Like, you know, I was looking at solutions. I mean, I was looking at software engineer, software developer, network engineer. I feel like um, I want to share this information with you that you know, being a solutions engineer or a sales engineer or a solutions architect, these are roles that brings together a certain kind of skill set. And I would really encourage you all to look into these roles. Right? Like uh, any company that has 
a technology platform or APIs or um, you know, a SaaS platform will need somebody like this because it's the engineers who build the product don't necessarily want to sell it. And there's a lot of value in telling someone how best to use a product. So I really thrive in this role. There's so many facets to it. I'm still talking at conferences. I still blog. I still like, conduct webinars. So there's, it's, it's a huge umbrella. And it's also like, you know, if you like a customer-facing role, then I would definitely encourage you to look into this. So anyway, um, at this point, my then boyfriend and now husband, Gautam, and I have done like six years of long-distance relationship. And uh, when, you know, when I moved to LA, he moved to Toronto, and we were all of 22 years old then. And so we felt like, you know, even though we're dating, we're not going to make life decisions based on each other. So he went to Toronto, and I moved to LA. But little did we know, the next six years were spent in a flurry of FaceTime, Skype, airports, and flights. And uh, we did grow to become fiercely independent people but it was time to put an end to it, right? We wanted to live together. And that's when I heard about Netlify, where uh, it was, it's this young company with a lot of amazing and talented folks trying to build a better web, right? And Netlify was looking for its first solutions engineer, and they were building out a globally distributed team. I was looking for a challenge. I was like, okay, I've been at PubNub for four years, and I would love to lay the foundation of selling in a startup. And I want to live with my husband. And so it was a match made in heaven, right? So I was like, OK. I interviewed with Netlify. I got in, and I packed my bags and moved to Toronto on one of the coldest days of the year last year. <laughs> it was negative 21. There was a snowstorm, and we're moving a king mattress into our apartment. And I'm already wondering, what is this decision that I have taken? So to your point, that is the first question I get when I say I moved from California to Canada. Why would you do it? but love. Anyway. <laughs> and then, um, so I moved, to, I moved to Canada, but this brought in this whole era of remote working, right? It, it, it's becoming more and more popular today, but it comes with its own challenges. Um, I feel a sense of isolation that I have not felt in a while. Right? And I mean, the, I'm so used to the chit chat and the bonding that happens in the office. My previous role was in office. I did commute to it. Um, and so it takes a while to get used to it. Um, and then I always felt like, am I being heard? Is it, is it a case of out of sight, out of mind? Right? Like, is it the same if I'm on Zoom on the other side or Skype on the other side talking to you all? Do you still like, feel my presence there? And, um, but on the other side, there is no commute. <laughs> Take a moment to soak that in. Um, uh, the, the amount of time I have reclaimed on a day-to-day -day basis is massive. Right? There's no commute, and you get a lot of flexibility in how you want to spend your time between personal and work work-related stuff. And Netlify is also, I mean, they are a remote-first company, so people are all over the world, and all the processes are geared towards the fact that we're going to be remotely distributed. So no one's having these important conversations in the hallway and you know, near the water cooler. Everything's publicly documented. It's shared on Slack channels. And they, they definitely try a lot to make it work. Um, hmm. At this point in my career, what's happening? So yeah, I moved to Toronto. It's been great. But the first thing that I did when I did move to Toronto is to feel that sense of community is I joined the core group of Women of Code Toronto. Um, I was looking for a community that I could lean on, I could learn from, and I could interact with on a, a, a regular basis. And so you know, the fact that the office was thrown out of the window and I now work from home, I definitely felt that need to have a sense of community and belonging somewhere in Toronto. And so we host events once or twice a month. And it could range anywhere from uh, technical, um, you know, uh, technical topics to recruiting events. And there's a whole gamut of events that we have. So that's been a great uh, opportunity and outlet for me. And so I feel like you know, at every point in our life, there's always other people going through similar things. So it's up to us to r really seek out those people and those opportunities so that um, you get a sense of belonging. 
so going back to Henri asking me to talk today, he put that faith in me that I didn't have in myself, right? And I feel like uh, we, this, this is applicable to a lot of us. We really need to believe in ourselves and we need to find those people who believe in us and uh, who encourage us to do more things. And like how Elaine also mentioned, public speaking is one of those things for me as well. Um, it's nerve wracking and the amount of time I have spent trying to prep prepare for this particular talk is crazy. But when I'm on the stage, um, I forget all of that, right? Like I'm able to naturally connect with you all and I feel like I've become a better person because this is one of the goals for me. I want to do more of this. And so, and then I go and sign up for the next, next talk, right? So that same cycle of terror and excitement continues. Um, so here I am showing up for myself because is anything ever enough? You do what's best for you. This was my opportunity and I seized it. What's yours? Thank you.